Hello and welcome to the Energy Storage Challenge, brought to you by the Southampton Cohort from the Centre for Doctoral Training in Energy Storage and its Applications. Lithium ion batteries are widely known for their applications in consumer electronics, and more recently electric vehicles. With demand for electric vehicles predicted to rise dramatically, lithium ion batteries will be under increasing scrutiny to deliver advancements in performance. One aspect of performance required from lithium ion batteries is the need to function at extreme temperatures. The latest commercial lithium ion batteries can be charged between 0 and 45 degrees Celsius, whilst they can be discharged between minus 20 and 60 degrees Celsius. There is a great deal of research into extending these temperature ranges, and potential solutions to this problem require a controlled temperature environment in which to test them in. Our proposed apparatus to heat and cool our test rig is through the use of Peltier elements. A Peltier element is a thermoelectric heat pump that transfers heat from one ceramic plate to the other. Through the application of a current, one side of the device heats up whilst the other cools. By changing the direction of the current, we can reverse this effect. So after we decided on a basic concept for the device, it was my role to perform the detailed design for manufacture using SolidWorks. The battery is supported within an aluminium jacket, with the Peltier elements attached to each side and the rest of the block insulated from ambient. The enclosure provides insulating base and sides for the block, with prongs in the middle to support the battery and a slot for the copper contact to pass through. The enclosure cap has the same features as the bottom. M5 bolts and nuts are used to secure the device together. ABS was chosen for the initial build because it is cheap and easy to 3D print and is stable over most of the temperature range required. After creating a 3D model of our test rig, we had to run some heat transfer simulations to see if it could meet the requirements. The aluminium material of the heating jacket provides a higher conductivity and a uniform temperature distribution across its surface. This behaviour is ideal and provides uniform heating over the surface of the lithium ion battery. The ABS enclosure has significantly lower temperatures around the adhesive of the feet and the bolt holes to avoid thermal stresses at the joints. We sourced aluminium blocks from a metal supplier and machine them in the student workshop. We're going to use an Arduino Mega to control and power the two Peltiers. Initially we built a power shield by soldering on components. An Arduino Ethernet shield is stacked on top of the Arduino board to collect temperature data and write it to an SD card. A power shield will allow for increased power and provide the ability to run an output of 12 volts and higher current. An ATX power supply will be connected to the shield to power the Peltier elements. Two Peltier elements are run in series to a single digital pin at 6 volts each, with the temperatures monitored by a thermocouple connected to the Arduino board. We use the Arduino software to set and monitor the temperature. In the compiler, we added code to read the thermistor. In later trials, we were able to use a thermocouple for greater accuracy. We adjusted the temperatures at which the Peltier element switched on and off to improve the control. The results were viewed on the program's monitor and logged on the SD card for further analysis. We have designed and built the hardware. We now have to characterise its performance. We'll do this over a range of temperatures and optimise it at 40 degrees. Let's look at the results. The hardware was characterised at 10 degree increments starting at 40 degrees. Over the test period it showed good uniformity throughout the run. At 50, 60 and 70 degrees the uniformity improved but at 80 degrees there were fluctuations outside of the agreed limits. Going below room temperature however was more of a problem but showed good uniformity again at 20 and 10 degrees but struggled to reach zero. 
The device, being optimized at 40 degrees, had improved performance by changing the set point as seen between the blue and grey lines. In conclusion, we have designed and tested our rig, showing that it functions between 2 and 80 degrees. Looking ahead, we would like to explore how to cool the rig to lower temperatures as we were unable to remove the heat produced by the pelty elements at a fast enough rate. We anticipate better cooling results through experimentation with better heat sinks or with a different cooling device that can provide lower temperatures than pelty elements. Thank you.